For those of you who don't know Jamie O'Brien, Jamie is our marketing and communications manager who started with us at the beginning of the year uh, and has had a baptism of fire in that uh, short period of time and getting an understanding of not only the beef industry but Herefords and Herefords Australia and working for me apparently and all those other challenges. Uh, we were, and I make no secret of the fact that we were a long way behind on our marketing and comms activities. We are playing catch up, we are still playing catch up. We've come a long way. There are some great things happening in that area for us uh, in terms of things like new brochures that Jamie's been working on, which will be launching very shortly. But what is really important today is to give us a little bit of a look at our new website, Jamie. Okay, so would you join me in welcoming Jamie O'Brien to do a brief presentation for us. Thanks very much everyone, and I'll, um, just to, um, to start off, um, it's been a bit of a mission to get this far um, in the last seven or eight months, but um, just giving you a look at for the last time at our old website, so um, it's been a great site um, to date and it's, I'm sure it's, it's done its job, so uh, but it's time to move forward a, a little bit more, so I'll just type in the domain for the new site. Um, it doesn't actually go live till tomorrow, so you're the first ones to see it. Um, um, and uh, once the, the records with Google and the um, server are all updated tomorrow, that's when it will go live. So it will currently sitting at a temporary site um, before it goes live, so just while that's loading, um, I'll just give you a, a bit of a rundown on, on what it's, um, on, on some of its benefits and, and why we've changed. Um, basically we've changed because we saw that there was um, a, a growing trend with, with different needs, particularly with um, uh, videos on the website, um, that's been uh, quite a um, a huge component of, of, of what um, Hereford Australia has been moving into with some of the marketing plans that we're putting forward. Uh, the younger generation particularly um, are moving into, that, um, moving into that area. So as you can see, this is the new site now. I'll just um, decrease the size a little bit. So you can see it a bit better. Um, in terms of the whole site, so you can see the background images. Um, and you can see um, um, so it's great to have a there. <laughs> um, you're very lucky if you go onto the website on your, on your photo, because I'm quite fussy with, with my photos because I'm a photographer, as you can see. And um, so there's a whole new um, host of features. We've um, separated, just scroll down a little bit, we've separated um, a few little things here and there. Um, so we've separated the, the sales and the event section. Some of that's still being uploaded. It'll take a little bit of time. Um, we've uploaded, so you've got your videos on there as well, which there's, um, I'd also like to announce that um, we've got a new introduction video to promote the industry. Um, we've separated our media releases and our news section. So any news that comes under the media releases is um, specifically from Heritage Australia. And then the other news is, um, the latest news is uh, information about the industry, for example, things from um, Andrew Byrne um, or uh, Rob Banks. Um, we've got a promotion side, as, um, promotion section as well, just here. So that's promoting the pasture fed cattle assurance system. You can click on that and that'll go directly to the site, uh, directly to the pasture fed certified site. Um, and then you've got your um, sections here at the top as well. Um, promoting some of the um, the main the main sections of, of the Hereford industry, the EU industry, um, M, uh, um, the MSA, MSA and crossbreeding, um, and then we've also got another section here that we've done in conjunction with Fairfax um, that is looking at stud stock sales as as well. Um, so that's a stud stock website, sales website that's been just just recently been launched by um, Fairfax Media, just as loading. So that's specifically for Hereford, uh, for the Hereford industry. And with a lot of things going online, or everything's just about online now, um, that's for your benefit, so that your sales um, can happen a lot a lot easier. 
um, and, and you'll be able to, to utilise that, that facility. Um, so as I said, just be patient over the next few weeks as it's still loading a few things up. Um, but essentially, um, that's, that's the, the gist of the site. Um, me. Member logins and everything work the same. Sorry, Jamie, just while you're on that one, how can people load into that? I see you've got commercial stud. Um, do you do that through uh, Fairfax or can you do that on the site? So you'll be able to con you'll contact Fairfax and the arrangements through them. Um, so that's, yeah, that's essentially the, the gist of the site. The, the, main, the main other sections all work. So that all the other sections work work exactly the same. For example, your um, member circle, so your member logins all work exactly the same. It's a little bit slow. The internet here is a little bit slow, so it all connects exactly the same as, as per normal. Um, you've also got connect, direct connections to the e newsletter. I'm sure some of you have seen the changes to the e newsletter that we've done over the last um, couple of months now. So I think we've just done our third edition. Um, <clears throat> so that's all um, moving forward. So, um, yeah. And I'll just move on to my other presentation. So I'm just um, giving a, uh, a brief rundown of the last presentation that I did um, with um, at the uh, Armadale conference, and just to um, <clears throat> a couple of things, the social media questions, and um, I know Danik is gone for the day. Um, so if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to come and um, speak to myself. Um, I'm quite a bit of a social media nerd, um, just because of my own interests, um, and I've experimented a lot um, with. Um, Facebook and Twitter and you know what works and what doesn't work um, and just in case you're wondering what I've been doing a lot between the camera and the social media and media releases I've just been trying to um, to make sure that uh, media particularly know about what's been happening today here at um, the Hereford's Australia conference so um, so just to give you yourself uh, give you guys a bit of a rundown on who I am uh, marketing communications started as a journal in Western Australia um, since 1999 um, and everything that I'm giving you today in this uh, presentation is my own experience and methods that I've tested and tried from uh, my roles in, in, in marketing and comms. Um, but most importantly the message that I want to say is that make sure you do your own research, um, create your own strategy but also don't be, um, don't be afraid to take advice from um, the variety of people that are on offer that can help you um, you're able to get my contacts off the website. Um, I'm always happy to help um, where I can. Um, and the first part I'd like to say, you're a marketer. <clears throat> um, each one of you in here has the ability to create your own strategy, implement your own strategy and make sure, that, make sure it works. Um, so one of the main questions that I'm going to present to you today is what can we do to create the most profit while also having a maximum positive impact. Um, and so what is marketing? In your situation, this is how I've answered this question. Marketing is the action of researching your target audience in order to, be to better understand or gain their attention. And gaining their attention could mean a number, of, a number of things, whether you need them to buy more bulls, sell more bulls, attend your sales, attend um, sh the shows, so that's... Um, and number two, it's a variety of tools used for a specific pers purpose for a sp to a specific person. Um, all too often, um, marketing campaigns and strategies are aimed very loosely at an audience with uh, absolutely no intention. Uh, one of my experiences um, when I was working with the banana industry was their specific campaigns that they made towards the younger generation by advertising um, with, in TV um, in that 18 to 39 year old age group so that they would buy bananas and it, it was very successful. So um, to get your own strategy in place you need to ask and look at a few um, vital questions and that is who, what, why, where, when and how. So the first section is who. 
never be fooled into adopting a one-size-fits-all solution. It doesn't work, very simply. Um, you, you cannot um, create um, a marketing campaign to fit an 18, 19, 20 year old and then to fit your older generation market. You need to be a bit variable and, and adjust things um, a little bit. Not necessarily in a, in a big way, but just you need to be aware of the differences of, of your market. And when finding out the who of your business, make sure you analyse the different factors of a person's identity. For example, ask the right questions, you know, for example, and these are strictly examples, what is their age bracket, what's their gender, what's their marital status, and what's their employment status. This is one of the most important parts of your campaign. What's the campaign for? What is the message of the campaign? Are you just selling something or do you want to promote a message? There's a big difference between selling and promoting a message. What do you expect or want for an outcome? Is it just about money or is it just about, is it, is about promoting your message? And that's another section that many people fall into um, is the outcome. They don't think about what could possibly happen and I'll um, speak about that shortly. So what is your market, your buyer? need your product? Will it change their life? Is it trendy? You know, um, um, cotton on <coughs> in a lot of their marketing campaigns, now they're going towards the younger, um, the, um, the, baby, the baby bracket because they're making clothes that are trendy because it's um, new mothers want the best for their children. So um, you'll see different campaigns do different things aimed at different sections of, of people. Why do you, the seller, want to sell this product? E.g., does it have health benefits? Are you, is it because you're passionate about the product? And these are very loose questions to get you thinking and motivate you to, um, to think about how you can put your own strategy and campaign together. Um, so now this is looking at where you can aim your campaign to in terms of the, what, who you use to promote your campaign. And these are in no particular order. So radio, um, there's some of the uh, what radio stations, the audience of the radio station. Um, um, you know, are you going for your more Nova, uh, Nova stations, or or are you going to go for your um, your ace radio stations, which are some of the one of the radio stations that's around here? Um, and think about when when people would be listening in the morning, this particular big time, because people going to and from work. Um, TV, advertising alongside, and TV is always a, a very, a much more expensive option, but there are um, cost effective ways of doing it. Um, and as I was saying before, think about advertising along specific shows. Um, <clears throat> for example, as, as I was saying before, banana, the banana industry advertised during Glee, um, which was aimed at that 18 to 39 year old, and Home and Away, 15 to 35 year olds, for example. Newspaper, what newspapers? It's all about location. No point going for the Courier Mail, for example, if people in Victoria, if your strategy is aimed at people in Victoria or, or um, um, farms in Victoria. Um, think about you know your page number at the front, the back, the size of the ad. Do you you know do you really want a full full page ad or can you go with a, a smaller size? Um, and also your colours. I'm a big person on colours. There's no point going in um, colours that are just so bright you'll turn the page, the people will turn the page. They don't want to see bright colours. Something neutral that's easy on the eyes um, in, and is easy to look at. Um, and then online, also social networking. Um, everything that Danica was saying was very was very good because social networking is, is a huge, um, there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, they're not always quite there just yet, but they are definitely coming up. Um, and, you know, specific websites. Herefords Australia, our, our new site will um, carry a few opportunities to, um, to advertise <coughs> and when. Um, you know, think about seasonal times of the year, end of financial year, Christmas, school holidays, when do people look at um, and watch or, or will see your um, advert, your um, campaign more. Look at what other events are happening at the same time, for example, particularly with your shows, your Sydney Easter show, 
um, your Melbourne show. Melbourne show has got a, it's a Hereford um, feature this year. Um, um, also your Brisbane, you know, your different shows that are happening locally as well. And also how, and this is moving on to the next section. How does this all apply to Hereford breeders? And how do we put these questions into practice? <coughs> so this is where you need to find the method, the tools that work for your business. And for example, um, you need to use the right tools. I'm going to emphasize this. Your contacts, and I'm finding this, I've talked to a number of breeders um, in recent weeks, your contacts are your lifeline. Um, make sure you have the right um, structure in place to utilise those contacts. Um, having them on paper in a ca cabinet um, is not really going to help you very much. Yes, you can still look at it, contact them, but being able to utilise that, that database of people and send them out information, make them aware that you're having a sale, make them aware that, you know, of what the activities of your, um, of your business. Microsoft Outlook is a fantastic um, software product that will more than, <coughs> um, more than um, utilise, help you to utilise what you need to do and hosted exchange services so that, as I was explaining to Steve and Debbie just last week, um, you're able to utilise that on, your, on an iPad, on an iPhone, on an um, Android phone and keep, and keep up to date of what's happening um, in, your, in your business and in other people's business as well. And that's very important that you keep a watch on what other people, what other businesses like your own are doing. Um, so don't be afraid to invest the time and money of having the appropriate systems, uh, hardware and software. You're going to save yourself a lot of time and money. Um, and one of the things that I was explaining um, just the other week was about, for example, uh, the use of uh, a program such as Photoshop. Something that will take, and I know a lot of you use your photos, for example, you have to resize them, you have to change them in, you know, um, physically in the terms of the file size and then also the, the, the size of the image um, to crop it. Something that will take you um, half a day with the use of Photoshop, and I can email the instructions of how to put this in place very easily to anyone, um, will take about two minutes. And I demonstrated that to, to Steve and Debbie just last week. Um, and they were, you know, it was good that they had that, that software because um, it makes a whole lot of difference to your time that instead of having to have to spend time on doing photos all day, you can do, there's a whole raft of other things that you could be doing. And it's tax deductible for you, so keep that in mind because it's, um, it's, it is, a, it is a, a very useful fact. So, um, and look for training opportunities. Um, uh, there, there's many free online training videos on YouTube, and if you need assistance, drop me an email. That's fine. I can I'm, I use training videos myself all the time. Um, learning, I, I've learnt Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, um, all myself from online videos, and obviously a bit of help from other people. But it's it's very useful. The use of websites. Um, Find a quality designer, and this is for building your own website. As a company, as a business, your yeah. website is, is your portal to the rest of the world. A content management system is best, it's one that you're able to edit um, and change yourself, and that's exactly like Hereford's Australia. There's a, there's a raft of, of um, website developers that um, are familiar with Hereford's Australia that can assist you with that and, and, it, and build very easy to use systems. It's almost like using Microsoft Word. Um, get your colours right there again. Uh, fluoro colours do nothing to attract attention. I, um, in my last presentation I, I gave some examples um, 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 but I'm running out of time today so I'll, I'll keep that and just have a look if you um, have a look at the presentation that's online. Research, make sure your information is spot on. Don't ever make up information for your website. Um, it'll shut your website down so quickly you, you won't even believe it. Um, and make sure you use captivating images. Um, and that's leading on to the next point. A good photo says a thousand words. It, it really does. Um, and my generation now, which is up and coming, 
um, really is appealed by you know what a, what a photo can do. Make the investment of a quality digital camera and take the time to learn how to use it. Um, there's a lot of places online that you can find to, to, to purchase a simple, easy to use um, uh, digital camera. It doesn't have to be some fandangled one like I've got. It can be very simple and easy to use. And have a look at other adverts <coughs> that, um, and see what is acceptable in terms of a good photo. Um, and there again, if you need assistance, um, I'm always available by email, via mobile to, to assist you with that and to, to assist Hereford members. Advertising, print and online. Uh, be creative, don't, don't be afraid to, to be creative. Invest in a designer to create the artwork for you. Um, be accurate in your descriptions and be prepared to cope with the responses. As I was saying before, if you advertise, if you put a strategy out, um, there's, no, there's no point carrying out that strategy if you're not prepared to act upon what, is, what, you're, off, what you're offering. Um, you'll lose your clientele. Um, it, it's your reputation that's at stake. Um, and look for opportunities of advertorial. Um, a lot of journalists don't like me saying that, but that's a, that's a bit of a hidden secret um, to look for opportunities. Sorry, Jamie Lee. <laughs> but it is offered. It is there. You have to ask. So I know when Hereford's Australia does advertising, I always ask for advertorial. And very often I won't take an ad out if I don't get free advertorial. It could only be 200, 300 words. It makes all the difference. Now there's opportunities that I'm not sure if some of you know about that Hereford's Australia <coughs> have been offering and I didn't, I didn't include this in my um, talk last time but um, Hereford's Australia offers email blasts and more than often I'll look after the artwork for you. It doesn't take me very long. We use Campaign Monitor and we email out to more than 1,500 members at the moment. That membership, that database is only growing. Um, um, it's a small cost and it's really quite a large audience. Um, and also Hereford's Australia Magazine. I've got the new, um, and this is something else that I'm, um, I suppose, launching today. Um, I've got the new advertising rate card for Hereford's Australia. Um, as some of you may have heard, the Hereford's Australia Magazine is going quarterly next year with the first edition starting, coming out in the beginning of January. Um, so that'll be, the first edition is a 52 page magazine and then we'll be going to a 32 page the second month of every season. So um, after January, it'll come out again in, uh, in April, then July, and then October. Um, so that first edition, we're looking at something like 3,000 breeders and industry representatives Australia-wide, and that will, will only grow. Um, I know some of you may be a bit skeptical about what the annual has done before and where it's gone and it's preaching to the converted. Um, you need to stick with it and, and trust that it is going to, um, to help the industry. So um, uh, we are, myself and John and, and Tessa and Rachel are working hard to ensure that um, the databases that we're, that we're putting together um, are really getting out there. So, and that's one of, another part of my expertise is building those sort of databases. Um, I, when I was with the banana industry, I got the banana industry from a, um, a readership of 500 to 5,500 in about six months. Um, it's about finding the, the contacts. And that's where I can say to you as well, if you've got contacts that you think that the membership, that the, the magazine can go to, email them, fax them, post them to, to us. I'm more than happy to try and to add them onto the, onto the database. It's about us working together as an industry and I'm happy to, to accept that sort of help from, from you. Um, online and print catalogues. There's no time, no time is wasted in having a print or online catalogue. And the digital age is, is expanding every day and an increasing number of audiences are relying solely on the internet. Um, so that's basically the end of my presentation. There is a, there is a bit more um, on communications and um, how you can write your information and. Um, target your audiences and some of the mistakes that you don't want to make, um, particularly with just sending out blanketed emails without making phone calls and having that contact. Um, and I'll put that, I'll put this presentation online by the end of the week, along with all the other presentations as well, just to let you know, um, to um, and and keep you up to date with you know with the information that you need to to help you. So, 
Um, if anybody's got any questions, I'm